All right, guys, new pickup today. We have a 2000s-ish, eight and a half horsepower, 27 inch snow blower. The looks that you get from people's faces when you're towing around a snow blower in the middle of July from your Honda F250 with the turbo power Cummins diesel Vortec, the 6.7 liter, the looks are priceless. This snowblower, it does run, but there are two caveats. Caveat number one, no pull cord. Caveat number two is that it definitely has an exhaust leak. You could kind of hear it hissing, and then when you shut it down, smoke came out from this area. It, it's pretty clear to me that you know there has been some exhaust leaking probably the whole job will take me about I don't know say 90 minutes for working on this for 90 minutes and giving it a place to be stored that's protected from the elements it's like $200 it's pretty much a hundred dollar an hour job and I'll teach you all the secrets if you buy my book no I'm just kidding we don't do that all right let's get this thing off the trailer and tear into it let's handle the uh, broken pull cord these model Briggs are held in with rivets. Get yourself a drill, and you're just gonna drill it. Step up drill bit sizes until eventually what's gonna happen is this outer ring here is literally just gonna fall off. And off she comes. Since the end of our string is broken, you just pull it right out. Perfect working pull start. All right, this might be a little bit more in depth than I thought. May not just be an exhaust gasket. Checking down under here. I don't know if you can if you can see that oil spot that goes past where the exhaust is. It might actually be a head gasket. So I just got everything out of the way. I got this cover out, suspicion confirmed. That is a blown head gasket right there. Well, now that we know that it's got a blown head gasket, it's time to start disassembling stuff, getting all of this garbage out of the way. Uh, fuel tank's already drained, so we'll just pull the line, get that off, pull the carburetor, the exhaust. Here we go, let's get to it. All right. Oh, that, oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one was a little tight. How about you? You know, I think someone's been in here because there was a bunch of loose bolts. I saw duct tape on some of the kill switch wires. The terminals broke off from the kill switch and it had brand new oil in it and it was also completely overfilled. There we go. Set those aside. All right. Oh yeah. Here's our head. We'll inspect it on the table in a sec. All right. So I think that's a little broken. And we gotta grab these push rods out. Okay. Are these the same? I think our push rods are absolutely identical. Gonna go set those down on the table. So, uh... Yeah, not much to see in here. Here we have our head. Again, keeping the carb on because you pull those carbs off, there's like a 90% chance that you're gonna have to redo the seal here. And there's another seal here. Giving this thing only what it really needs. And we're flipping this around to inspect. Yeah, there's been a lot of oil in this cylinder. Again, it ran. I mean, I think the valve assembly is gonna be fine. It's a shame that the pull cord was off of this thing because just by just by pulling the cord lightly and feeling for compression I would have felt that there was no compression in this thing at all I, I definitely would have bought it would not have bought it for what I paid for it I definitely would have talked the guy down but you know you know there wasn't a pull cord in it couldn't check for compression I took the risk uh, you live and you learn pro tip sometimes if you suspect that a head gasket is blown 
and it's blown in this area here one thing you'd want to check if you suspect a blown head gasket when you're buying a machine is if it crosses here in this area where these two holes are these are the holes for the push rod uh, pull the oil cap because these channels lead directly into uh, the case of the engine so if there's excess pressure coming out from the piston onto this side it'll come spewing out of that cap as soon as you take it off you have to do it while it's running obviously so now I just gotta hop on the internet and order new head gasket valve cover gasket and a pull cord pull cords are already on the way it was like three bucks I don't think the gaskets are gonna be that expensive and then all we got to do after that is literally just slap this thing back together and it should be like a perfect running machine I'm gonna go inside get those parts ordered and I'll get back to you. Stay tuned. All right, boys, we're back with some parts. Already got the pull cord installed. I think I got it like $3 and change. We have exhaust gasket, head gasket, valve cover gasket, totaling in at, totaling in at $22.30. So $25 in parts to fix this thing. Just gotta make sure these seal, sealing surfaces are all cleaned up and then like, all we do is just put these $20 worth of gaskets in and then sell this machine. Let's find TDC so we don't have to fight against this thing. The compression cycle. That's TDC. Top dead center. Compression cycle. There we go. Alright, now hopefully if I'm lucky I can just literally just compress these valve springs just a tad, just enough to get these on. I don't even have to worry about... Yeah. Oh, wow. Dude, those things are... Those things are so weak. No wonder these engines can't rev. Yeah, so I don't even have to mess with valve adjustment. It was fine when I started, and I can just push the valves down. Alright. So check your torque specs again. Good and tight. Click and click and click. <sighs> nice. We got exhaust, intake, compression. Compression's not bad on this engine. That's the first time I've ever felt the compression on this thing. All right, we're good. All right, everything is put back together. Everything's looking good. The only problem is now is that this thing was way overfilled on oil when I got it. So we have it flipped over on its side. Just gonna let a little, a little drain out. There's a good bit of them. There's some metal in there. Oh, so there's definitely some metal in there. You know what? All right, yeah. Just because of how much metal's in that oil, uh, I'm gonna let this drain all the way. I don't, I don't like the look of that at all. I don't like that one bit. So we're gonna get all that out of there. All right, so we got the proper amount of oil. We just put gas in the thing. We got our head gasket installed, valve gasket and exhaust gasket. Now, let's put this thing on choke. Prime it a little bit to on, see how she goes. Huh, okay. I think that's oil burning off from when I tipped it over. Or, let's hope anyway, right? But it does run. Let's try it again. Alright, let's let it burn off all the oil. I think that's it. I'll just let it run for a little bit. I'm gonna get some earplugs because man is this thing loud. Alright, we just siphoned all the gas out. Now uh, we're just gonna let it drain and then it's off to storage until winter. 
Oh, I can hear it. And there it goes, off to storage. Oops. All right. <sighs> Off to storage. The New York State Police at Angwell are searching for a person who stole a snowblower from a union home. Officials say they are asking for help identifying the person in this image. They are believed to have stolen a red snapper snowblower from a home somewhere. on Pine Street. If nope, anyone has any somewhere. information about who this person may be, you are asked to call the state police at 7 o'clock. All right. Here's the pile. How we doing in here? Everything looks Gucci down there. Wherever this ends at. That's all look good down there. Okay. Alright little buddy. See you in six months. Don't blow any more head gaskets. Alright. Well, thanks for watching the videos guys. Really appreciate it. Only got a 30 minute walk back home. See you in the next one.